Hello everyone, in this lecture, we will look at the amazing process of DNA replication. And now we have come to part 2 of this lecture, and we will look at the key steps in DNA replication by using E. coli as a model organism. Very briefly, there are three steps in DNA replication. Step 1 is initiation, which starts with the unwinding of the DNA double helix and the synthesis of an RNA primer. Step 2 is elongation of the new strands by DNA polymerase, or step 3 is the termination of this process. Okay, here is a basic model of DNA replication in E. coli, and it includes many enzymes. The first one is DNA gyrase. So what it does is to unwind the supercoils in the DNA, because most of the time, DNA is supercoiled to form a compact structure. Then you have the helicase enzyme that unwinds the double helix at a specific DNA sequence known as the origin. And then you also have the single strand binding proteins that prevent the single strand DNA from rewinding back into a duplex. So you also have primase, which is also known as an RNA polymerase that will synthesize a short sequence of RNA primer. So out of so many enzymes, which one is your favorite? Well, there is a classic answer to that question. And here is the proposed answer. The answer is helicase. Because if I were an enzyme, I would be DNA helicase so I could unzip your genes. I'm not sure if you understand that, but it is accurate and funny at the same time. And let's come back to our enzymes. So once the genes are unzipped by DNA helicase, DNA polymerase tree can start adding complementary nucleotide bases. And always remember, you will only add the nucleotide bases from the 5' prime towards the 3' prime direction. And at the same time, DNA polymerase tree also proofread the bases to replace the wrong one with the right nucleotides. And not to forget that you also have DNA polymerase 1. They will come and replace the RNA primers with DNA molecules. However, there are two problems associated with the synthesis of DNA. First of all, DNA polymerase needs a primer to function, and that problem is solved by having another enzyme, which is RNA polymerase, or better known as a primase. So what it does is to synthesize a small stretch of RNA primer that is complementary to the DNA sequence here. Now on the other hand, you have a second problem by which DNA polymerase only copies towards the 3' prime direction. So it's from 5' prime towards 3'. Prime. So we know that DNA is anti-parallel. So when one strand runs from 5' prime towards 3', prime, it means another strand must run from 3' prime towards 5'. Prime. And as a result, DNA synthesis on the leading strand is going to be very smooth because it is from 5' prime towards 3'. Prime. While on the other lagging strand, it is going to be very laggy because the 5' prime end is over here, meaning that you always have to wait for the Healy case to unzip new area. As a result, the synthesis on the leading strand is continuous and smooth, while the DNA synthesis on the lagging strand will happen in short pieces, known as the Okazaki fragments. And as mentioned just now, these are the Okazaki fragments, which have the size of about 1,000 to 2,000 nucleotides long. However, how do we join these fragments together? Well, we will need the help from DNA ligase, which will form phosphodiester bonds and join these fragments together. In a nutshell, these are the proteins or enzymes required in DNA replication. First of all, you have helicase that help to unwind the double helix, and then you have single strand binding proteins that prevent the single strand from rebinding or reannuling. You have primosome, which contains RNA polymerase that is required in the synthesis of RNA primer. You also have DNA polymerases 1 and 3 that is involved in the synthesis of DNA. And last but not least, DNA ligase that joins the Okazaki fragments together. Now in reality, the replication fork will not look as beautiful as this, as it's slightly more complicated. So what you will see is that in nature, the lagging strand will form a loop so that both DNA polymerase tree on both leading strand and lagging strand can work towards the same direction. Not only this, DNA polymerase tree actually forms 
a holoenzyme complex which consists of two groups of subunits one for the leading strand while another one for the lagging strand and you have got two copies of everything so you can see that there are multiple subunits involved in this structure i'm not going to go through the details but just want to highlight this beta subunit which is this one and this one it is forming a sliding clamp structure which allows this enzyme to attach on two strands of DNA while doing DNA synthesis. So in this slide, I just want to show you the structure of the sliding clamp, which enables DNA polymerase to fix firmly on the DNA strand and they will not fall off easily. So that gives DNA polymerase a very high processivity, which means they can go through a long distance before they are falling off. What a smart design, isn't it? And here is the loop structure that I have mentioned just now. So with this structure, it allows both lagging strand and the leading strand to be copied in the same direction. And in this electro microgram, you can definitely see that the structure of the holder enzyme and the loop structure. So DNA replication is first studied in prokaryote by using E. coli as a model. And E. coli is having a single circular chromosome. So replication will start at one specific sequence known as the origin of replication. And once it is started, it will proceed in both directions around the chromosome. So as I mentioned, DNA replication always begin at the origin of replication. So showing here is the single circular chromosome of E. coli. So where is the origin of replication? Well, it is right here. And it is known as the ORIC, which has this specific sequence. Now, if you look at the sequences of this ORIC, you will find many AT repeats. Why is it so? Well, you have learned that AT comes with two hydrogen bonds, while CG pair comes in three hydrogen bonds, which means when you have a lot of AT, it is the most likely point that you will be unwound by the DNA heat case because it has the fewest hydrogen bonds. But first of all, a protein known as DNA A will first bind to this region and you will recruit DNA helicase to unwind the double helix, followed by the other proteins and the subsequent steps in DNA replication. Once the replication begins, the replication forks will proceed in both directions and they will extend as new DNA molecules are being synthesized and eventually they will stop at the termination point and forming up two daughter DNA molecules. In this picture, I just want to show you the structure of the replication fork. So you have one replication fork here, which will proceed in this direction, and a second replication fork that will proceed in this direction. And I believe the termination point is somewhere in between here. Okay, how about DNA replication in eukaryotes? Well, it's more complicated as it contains a larger amount of DNA in multiple chromosomes and those chromosomes are also present in the linear structure as compared to the circular structure in prokaryotes. So to cater this problem, eukaryotes have multiple origins of replication so that each one can replicate itself. But overall, the basic mechanism and the enzymes are similar in both prokaryotes and eukaryotes. Okay, here is the take home message. Number one, the structure of DNA explains heredity as it enables DNA replication through the semi-conservative model by complementary base pairing. And number two, DNA polymerase plays an important role to the cell in DNA replication. Not only this, these enzymes are also used in biotechnology in the process such as polymerase chain reaction and DNA sequencing. And in your PowerPoint slide, you will find this video I think it has summed up everything pretty well, so feel free to take a look.